Hey, get out your instrument. In this video, I'll be teaching Polska i Giamol of Ivar Tauro. If you haven't seen my video on lore for this tune yet, feel free to check it out now or after this video. I'll be teaching this tune somewhat close to real time, meaning you can just follow along and play with me for a minimal rewinding and looping experience. I learned this tune while on the one-year folk music course at the Erik Sahlström Institute in Tobo, Sweden. What I like about this tune is how it plays around with rhythm, and I enjoy the overall groove that it has. All right, let's learn the tune. Starting with second finger on the A string. Just the basic rhythm without ornaments.
take it from the beginning. One, two, three. a swingy feeling you can start the first note early like this one two three playing a detuned nickel harpa or violin. Um, so I'll go ahead and play the first two bars here. So the one, two, three. <laughs> Arpeggio. So I'll play this one more time and then we'll move on to the next two bars. So one, two, three. <laughs> going down it's a arpeggio on D and then scale back up to G 
So starting at D. So just that part. We're going to start third finger on D. So one, two, three. landed on is the same G that we started with um, from that pickup um, so we're basically just going to do this whole thing all over again but with a different ending so remember starting from D it's a pick up to G one two three <laughs> resolving to G. That's the whole B part. Um, one thing to note is there's some different transitions. So anytime you're starting the B part, you're going to start with that D pick up. And then when you're in the middle of the B part or you're transitioning to the repeat in the B part, you have this triplet scale going from D up to G. And then when you're ending the B part, you just have a long G. Um, so let's go ahead and play the B part and with those different transitions together. So one, two, three. string crossings here. Um, you can break it into different chunks like this. So if I just keep the G minor stuff together, we've got... I'm just on two strings here. I'm on the C string and then down to G. And then you could do this chunk separately. This is going between the A and the C strings on that D7 arpeggio. into chunks like that, put those two pieces together. Um, another thing you could do is practice it with just separate bow strokes, which like separate bows are easier than slurred, um, you know, maybe with string crossings in some cases. Um, so just trying some of those things to kind of help you be more precise with the separate bows and the string crossings and then putting those chunks together. Um, so now about the rhythm, it's really difficult to get that sense of like elastic kind of pushing and pulling, especially on the second beat at this tempo. Um, so what I would suggest doing is um, you can listen to the playthrough I do at the beginning of this video. You can listen to the octave harpa video that I do. 
Um, you could, you know, just basically listen to a bunch of people playing this tune. Listen to Olaf Johansson um, and try maybe uh, walking like a Polska, you don't, a Polska rhythm. You don't need to be a dancer. Um, all you have to do is just step on beats one and three and kind of see where the two lands and how you can like feel the two in your body um, because kind of having that groove in your body will help with playing it. Um, so those are some things I would recommend to get an idea of that kind of elastic feeling. finger on G on the A string and we're going to set ourselves up to be super awesome later um, by also having our first finger on the G that's an octave below the G we're on here on the C string. The reason why we're doing this is it will make our lives easier later. Um, and it also puts our hand frame in the right shape to play this octave. Um, so if we just get in the habit of starting that way, we will have a good time <laughs> with the rest of this section. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and demo just the part that's in this position. One, two, three. Setting back to this hand position, um, you can join me. So one, two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Last time. Um, also, on the last note, that F, I'm kind of lifting a bit from the string and traveling a bit towards the frog. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is it kind of adds to this groove that's in the C section that's really nice. Um, and it emphasizes the fact that after that F, there's a downbeat and we're not playing on it. So adding that lift there shortens that F and it emphasizes that beat. Um, let's go ahead and do that a couple more times and just paying attention to that lift on the F. On the F. So one, two, three. So this is where the climbing technique that I mentioned at the beginning of the video comes into play. So what I'll do is I'll repeat what we just did there and then I'm going to keep going. One, two, three. So I'm landing on this D with third finger. Basically, we're in a G minor chord again, um, and we're just decorating it with some ornaments. So I'm going to head back up here. So one, two, three.
So if you're having trouble with these jumps, uh, one thing you could do is just practice just left hand only without the bow. So if I'm in rhythm, uh, one, two, three. I'm exaggerating a bit how hard I'm uh, pressing on the keys. You can also um, have like a guide finger when you're playing um, or think of a finger as kind of a guide. So either like the finger you're on. So we're going to end this on this F. I could use this F kind of as a guide finger and go down to the B flat and then my third finger is there for the D. Um, that's one way to kind of think of it is, you know, just go souping down the nickel harpa and then your D's right there. Um, so those are some uh, tips and tricks you can try uh, for jumping. And then obviously we don't, <laughs> when, you're, when, you're, when you're playing it for real, you don't want to be going, Aah. um, in the middle of the tune. <laughs> Keeping on going, um, we're gonna start with G on the C string. And this should seem a little familiar, actually. We're kind of recycling this bit from the A part. It's just a little different with the bowing. So I'm gonna go ahead and play. One, two, three. So if you remember in the A part we had It's the same notes, but we're slurring them together after the G's. So if you want to join with me, it's one, two, three. Cycling a lot from the A part on that run, and then we have this same half ending as what we had in the B part. So we're gonna go starting from that G and that run up again, and then down to D. One, two, three. So let's do that again. One, two, three. So there's a couple ways you can do this. There's that whole guide finger idea. So my first finger's on D, I come up to this G here, and guess what? We're in that octave position. Um, that's one way to do it. Uh, another way is to jump, just straight up jump. So so you can just practice. That's a, a good one to practice with or without bows. All right, so now we've learned all the notes in the C part. Um, let's put it all together and practice those jumps. So starting with that G octave, so one, two, three. the same half and whole endings as we did in the B part. Um, but now when the C part comes back around, we've got this problem. Uh, we're on G with fourth finger or, you know, third finger if you're playing a D tune nickel harpa. 
Um, if you're fiddle, you can just cheat and we envy you, but it's okay. Um, you guys have a lot of great things. I'm also a fiddle player, so I enjoy the luxury of not having to shift all over the place as well. Um, so for Nickel Harper though, we're stuck with this. So one thing we can do is, well, we could, you know what, that guide finger idea, we could use that same thing, but while we're holding down this G with our fourth finger, pivot to our first finger, and then look at that, we have our G octave position. Uh, that's one way of handling that. Um, so the way it would look if I show my fingers a bit, um, going into the repeat is, that <laughs> helps if I start on the right note. So I, while I was holding that G, I pivoted, and then my third finger's right there for that octave. Another nice thing um, that I just demonstrated is this pickup that adds more emphasis to that first beat and contributes to a nice swingy feeling for dancing. So I did this. So when I put it into context, It's like whoa like you're you're emphasizing that downbeat more when you're coming back around in the c part um so that's kind of a nice thing to add and you've got that freebie octave right there we're almost there on the last time through the c part there's a nice rhythmic variation you can do on the final time you play in the octave g position i'll show it here one two
enjoyed learning this tune. If you like any of these videos, feel free to hit that subscribe button. If you have comments on things you liked or things you want to see next time, get in the comments. Until next time, hey doll!